Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Carl's Tech Shed. Right, what I've got for you today is going to be a teardown of this uh, Disco Net Browser 3000. Uh, this, the, these, um, these, well, if you call them netbooks, um, these were sold a couple of years ago by lots of retailers here in the UK, um, mainly Curry's, PC World, Argos, uh, Sainsbury's, HMV. There was there was probably a good maybe a dozen retailers, uh, large retailers of that, which were selling these. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of them uh, started to break down after a few months because they were apparently such of such poor build quality, or at least that's what I've read on forums and websites. Um, so I thought, well, I'll buy one and see for myself. Now. This was sold to me by someone on eBay um, for around, I think I've paid about a tenner for it, um, simply because it is broken, it does not power on, which uh, is quite a common problem. Now we'll just go over the specifications of this. Uh, now that's the first sign of trouble. We've got uh, an ARM based processor at 248 MHz, which is not only ridiculously slow, but the architecture is not going to allow it to run any modern applications which are going to run on a normal PC. Uh, we've got a 7 inch high resolution screen, uh, 64 megs of DDR RAM, 2 gigs of memory, um, we've got an SD card slot and you can use a USB flash drive, Windows CE 5.0 operating system which is, um, well, it's, it's mainly found on handhelds I guess. Um, we've got some pre-installed software here, we've got MSN Messenger, we've got Internet Explorer, we've got uh, Windows Media Player. Um, this actually caught my eye. We've got one USB 2 port and two USB 1.1 ports. Now, uh, I mean, I can't understand why they didn't just install three USB 2 ports because the chances are the controller chip for USB 2 would probably support uh, probably anything up to about six ports, so I don't see why they've installed two USB 1.1s. Um, we've also got uh, an SD card slot which goes up to 8 gigabytes. Uh, I'm, I think the 8 gigabyte limit is not due to the card reader itself, but the processor which is running it. Uh, we've got all the usual ports, uh, microphone, earphone, DC, power, um, got a full QWERTY keyboard on there, 2.2 2 inch touchpad, built in lithium battery, um, and it supports some video formats uh, and audio formats. It's got a 10100 LAN and Wi-Fi compatibility. So let's open this up and see what we've got inside. Bear in mind this is used because it is a faulty piece of equipment, so uh, it's not an unboxing video as such. Now we've got the piece of equipment here. Uh, we've also got the charger which the seller did tell me was uh, no good because he's, well, it doesn't look too good actually. He's uh, tried to solder it back together but it doesn't look very good. Put insulating tape over the top of it as well. So, should have just bought a new power supply, they're so cheap. Never mind. Right, so let's have a more in-depth look at this. Now, we've got the Disco logo, which is on the top of it. Uh, so you may want to cover that up if you take this into a coffee shop or something before people start laughing at you. Um, you've got this terribly poor quality brushed aluminium effect, but it's actually plastic. It's uh, really cheap, even the hinges, they just feel really cheap and nasty, there's no resistance on them, they just feel like it's flopping about. Uh, now on the back we've got the USB 2 port, we've got a 10100 LAN connection and the power connection. On this side we've got the SD card slot, the microphone input and headphone output. Uh, on this side we've got nothing other than the LEDs and on this side we've got two USB 1.1 ports. I'll open it up to let you have a look. Uh, on the face of it, uh, it doesn't. It looks smaller, certainly smaller, but doesn't look like any. Uh, it looks similar to any other network on the market. But uh, don't let that fool you. It's a really nasty piece of kit. Now, if we flip this over, you can see we've got a Windows CE license on there. Now, under here is going to be the battery. Oh, first sign of trouble such poor build quality that they've had to install a similar battery to what you put in a remote control car or something like that and it's not connected like normal laptop battery it's actually plugged in 
with uh, with a with a connector. Just caught my eye there the terrible chinglish on this uh, on this battery. Um, can't really make much sense of it, but I can't believe that large companies like Curry's PC World and Argos would allow would uh, would, would actually sell something like this themselves. You know, it's it's a bit of a joke, really. Never mind. We'll tell you what. I'm going to open this up and we'll see what lays beneath. Okay, well upon opening this up, uh, I can see the first thing which jumps out at me, uh, quite literally, um, is the terrible build quality of uh, the Wi-Fi adapter. Now instead of building it onto the PCB itself, um, they've actually soldered uh, what looks like a USB dongle, they've taken it out of the plastic packaging, they've soldered four wires onto it, connected it onto the board, uh, they've connected a, an antenna with a nice big blob of solder which is no doubt um, quite loose and then to top it off they've glued the board onto the onto the main board which is absolutely horrible um, it's I've never seen anything like it before well I, it looks like I found the cause of a fault it looks like there's a small MOSFET uh, just here which has burned out, whoops, it's come out a bit, now as you can see it's physically burned out, it's actually charred some of the PCB around it, so either someone's run this system on um, a power supply which is giving out more voltage than it's meant to handle, or one of the other components has failed and in turn blown the MOSFET. Now let's have a look at the other components here. Now this odd little board here, this is probably some sort of firmware chip, could even be where the operating system is held, because the 2 gigs of NAND flash RAM, uh, sorry, NAND flash memory is just here. Uh, I've checked the part number and that's a 2 gigabyte Samsung chip, so I'll give them credit, at least they're not using fake chips or reprogrammed chips like a lot of Chinese manufacturers do. Uh, this does look like uh, some sort of firmware chip or BIOS boot up. I'm not 100% sure. It's there's no markings on it. Uh, I've looked this part number up on Google and it comes up with absolutely nothing. So I can only guess what that's for. Uh, we've got the 64 megs of DDR memory here. Now this is the processor. Uh, yes, yeah, a 243 megahertz ARM-based processor. Now up here we've got the um, we've got the LAN controller. Let's have a look at that. That is made by, where are we, made by Davicom, okay. Now we've got a few other components here, we've got the 25 kilohertz crystal, we've got uh, some power management uh, circuitry down here, we've got the battery charging connector here. Um, now, one other thing which caught my eye was um, this little switch here, which says USB boots. Now, while this cover is in place, it's impossible to get to. So, I can only imagine that that would be used in the factory for installing the operating system from a USB flash drive. So, uh, on, upon boot up, uh, the operator would press this button, um, plug in the USB flash drive, and it would uh, download all of the um, operating system onto the onto the memory. 
Now we've also got uh, another chip here which I think is a uh, USB, uh, maybe a USB chip, I'm not 100% sure of the part number, let's have a quick look. Uh, not sure what that is, but that's connecting the, it looks to me like it's connecting to USB 1.1 ports. Um, the USB 2 port on the back uh, looks like it's wired directly into uh, the CPU, so that's probably, it may have uh, an onboard USB 2 controller. Now we've got some other smaller components over here, like I said these are all for power management. Um, what I noticed was that, uh, sorry, bearing in mind the back side of this board is empty uh, apart from a few chip resistors so there's nothing else on there. So my only assumption is that the CPU has an onboard SD card controller. Now we've got a little touchpad down here which is 2.2 inches across. Uh, the chipset manufacturer on that is... let's have a look. can't really see it that well, it's so small. It's got a part number, but it doesn't look like it's got a manufacturer's uh, manufacturer name on it. Now we've got this number here, which is interesting. It looks like this may be a, a manufacture date. Uh, we've got 2009, 2706, so that must be the 27th of June, 2009. Uh, 3680 is probably the uh, production number, so this, this is the... 3680th model to come off the production line that day. So it's about three years old. Uh, we've got this little flex connector here which goes into the um, this goes into the keyboard uh, and the and the mouse. Sorry just the keyboard, the mouse controller is here. Uh, one other thing I've noticed is uh, well as you probably guessed from that they're very fond of their hot glue so instead of actually getting a, a, a proper um, connector for this. They've actually just glued in an RJ45 connector with hot glue, so it looks absolutely atrocious. Um, on the flip side of this board, uh, let me just unplug this little mouse. I'm still something holding it in. Right. On the flip side of this, you'll see they've m used more hot glue to glue in the um, display cable. Now this is not a standard VGA or DVI cable, this is going to be some sort of um, proprietary um, LCD controller which will be controlled directly by the, um, by the CPU um, because as, as I say, as said before, this is meant to be used in um, pocket PCs so this would have to have everything in there, um, it has to have the display controllers, the USB controllers, basically everything so um, that's why you haven't got an a separate uh, graphics chipset in this. So yeah, you've got uh, the, the cable here. It looks like it's got around, I'd say about 20, maybe 25 pins. So it's it's more than VGA, uh, a 15 pin VGA, but less than a DVI. So it's, it must be some sort of proprietary connection. Uh, I can't help but notice we've got two cables here, uh, which are split. So I'm guessing that would be one would be for horizontal, um, one would be for vertical data. So let's have a look at the screen on this thing. Uh, like I said, I'm not very happy with this at all so far. It looks absolutely atrocious, so I'm not expecting the screen to be any better. It's probably going to be uh, some nasty little brand I've never heard of, um, or it's just going to be really poor quality, glued in place or something. I'm just going to pop this camera down while I unscrew these and remove these little bits of plastic. Okay, I've now removed the uh, plastic from that. Uh, yeah, as, as as I thought, there's no manufacturer's name on here. There's just a few part numbers and a serial number. And surprise, surprise, uh, made in China. Uh, just like everything else here. Uh, I wonder what's on this little board. It's probably just going to be for the speakers or something like that. Uh, it looks like it because it's just got the two... Um, it's just got two speaker connectors on each end. But let's have a look. I'll just pop the camera down for a moment again. Yeah, as I thought, we've just got, um, well this is actually for the display as well, we've got the connector which comes in here. So this cable here would carry both the audio and video signals. Uh, we've then got the, um, this coming off here as a backlight connector, just here. We've then got a microphone connector down here, we've got the right speaker connector here, left speaker connector on here. And in the middle we've just got some passive components, we've got some, looks like some capacitors, some MOSFETs, resistors, 
uh, yeah we've got a diode on there that's about it um, we've got a little antenna here which is for Wi-Fi uh, which then runs down here and into that horrible little uh, glued Wi-Fi connector uh, just while I was taking this apart, I thought to myself, because this runs on ARM, uh, it's, it's possible you could put either uh, Android or uh, Linux on here. So um, if anyone's got one of these which is actually working, you could probably put try putting Android or Linux on it and see if you can get it to run. Um, no doubt you'd probably find a forum where somebody's already done that, but it just came across my mind while I was taking it apart. But um, yeah, overall, this is not the sort of machine you want to get involved with uh, if if you're trying to use this as your own as as your one and only laptop or netbook, um, because you'll be sadly disappointed. Um, it's of such poor build and design quality that you're going to be cursing the day you ever bought the thing. So uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to give this maybe a, about a two out of ten, and the only reason I give them. Uh, 2 out of 10 instead of 1 is because they haven't had the cheek to use uh, a fake fake memory chip on the board so uh, that pretty much sums it up well thanks for watching and I'll have some more teardown videos in the next few days